Welcome to our series on math properties. In this session, we're going to talk about order of operations. Okay, so what is order of operations? When we're talking about order of operations, we're talking about rules that state the order in which we solve a problem. All right, so the question you might have is, why do we even need rules to determine the order for solving an operation? One of the things that makes math so enjoyable is that it's predictable and it makes sense. So if I had no rules, let's take, for example, 4 plus 5 times 2 divided by 2 minus 3. If I decided to go from left to right, I would have 4 plus 5, which would give me 9, times 2, which would give me 18, divided by 2, which would give me 9, and then finally minus 3, which would give me a final answer of 6. But what if I decided to go ahead and do the multiplication first? So I have 4 plus 5 times 2 gives me 10 divided by 2 minus 3. So now I decide, okay, I did the 5 times 2. Let me go ahead and go from left to right. So 4 plus 10 equals 14. 14 divided by 2 gives me 7. And then 7 minus 3 would give me 4. Okay, already I have two different answers to the same problem. Okay, what if I decided, all right, I want to do the division first, and then I'll do everything else. If I do it that way, then I have 4 plus 5 times 2 divided by 2 would give me 1. And then I have minus 3. So what does this give me? I have 9. 9 times 1 equals 9. And then 9 minus 3 equals 6. All right. So in this case, I get the same answer as the first one, but it's still a different answer than the second one. So things would get really complicated if everyone decided to do math problems in any order that they want. So there had to be an agreement. Okay. So all of the math people of the world got together and they decided, okay, we're going to follow these particular rules. And the rules go as follows. Whenever we have a problem that has multiple components and different types of operations, we need to follow something called PEMDAS. PEMDAS is an acronym to help you remember the order. So P stands for parentheses, E stands for exponents, M for multiplication, D for division, A for addition, and S for subtraction. So whenever you have a problem that has different operations, you need to follow these particular rules. So it goes in this order. The parentheses get solved first. Then if you have exponents, then you would do those. The next phase would be multiplication and division. Those two really go together. So if you have the division before the multiplication, you would go ahead and do the division before the multiplication. And finally, you have addition and subtraction. Those two also go together. So if the subtraction came before the addition, you would follow that order. You would do the subtraction and then the addition. Let's see what this looks like in practice. All right, let's look at these three examples. In the first one, I have 4 plus 3 in the parentheses times 2. So according to PEMDAS, I know that I need to solve the parentheses first. So 4 plus 3 would give me 7. 
and then 7 times 2 would give me 14. Now let's look at the second one. Here I don't have any parentheses but I know that multiplication would get solved before addition. So here I do 3 times 4 and it gives me 12 and then 12 plus 5 would give me 17. Alright, and the final one you have 10 minus 3 in the parentheses, so we know we have to do that first. So 10 minus 3 would give me 7. And then 7 times 2 would give me an answer of 14. Okay, let's look at three more problems. Now, as you can see, these three problems are a little more advanced. Okay, but we still follow the same rules. Our parentheses get solved first. So 4 plus 3 is equal to 7. Then we do the exponents. So 2 to the second power, that's the same as 2 times 2. That would give me 4. The next step is the multiplication. 7 times 4 gives me 28. And finally, the subtraction, 28 minus 12, would give me 16. Okay, let's look at this next one. Okay, here I have brackets and parentheses. Now, the thing you need to know is that brackets are pretty much the same as parentheses. So they get done first. So if you see something like this, it means that whatever is inside the bracket would get done first. But if you have a parentheses within a bracket or a parentheses within a parentheses, you do the parentheses inside first. So 2 plus 3 gives me 5. Okay, now 5 to the third power is the same as 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is equal to 125. So 5 to the third power gives me 125. Now I can finish whatever is inside the bracket, which is 125 plus 15, and that gives me 140. Once I'm done solving everything inside the parentheses or bracket, then I can go ahead and finish this by doing the division. 140 divided by 4 would give me 35. Let's quickly do the division on the side so that way we can do a quick review on how to do division. So if we have 140 divided by 4. How many times does 4 go into 14? It goes into 14 3 times. 3 times 4 is 12. I subtract. I'm left with 2. Then I bring down my 0. How many times does 4 go into 20? It goes into 20 five times. 5 times 4 is 20. And I am done. So my answer is 35. Okay, let's look at the last one. I have two sets of parentheses. Since I have two sets of parentheses, it really doesn't matter which one I do first. But we might as well start from left to right. So 10 minus 3 is 7. 2 plus 6 is 8. Now I can do my multiplication. 7 times 8 is 56. And 56 plus 10 is equal to 66. 
So my answer for this problem is 66. Okay, as a bonus, let me give you an example that would show what I do if I have division and multiplication. So if I have 10 divided by 2 times 3 equals, in this case, since I know that multiplication and division are pretty much the same thing, I go ahead and do it in order from left to right. So 10 divided by 2 would give me 5. And then 5 times 3 would give me 15. And this concludes our lesson on order of operations. You can find more videos in English and Haitian Creole at hctutorial.com. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, please email me at shillerambrose27 at gmail.com. Thank you.